can never come until we put Jesus on the throne. <laughs> and, and what we do, a lot of people in the church is not saved because they want a word from a prophet. They just want to read the scriptures. I hear somebody testimony. But Jesus wants to be on the throne. If you go to the 12th chapter, uh, well, no, the 8th chapter of Hebrews, and I think around the 11th verse, you can hear specifically said that by no means shall you need to ask any man anything. For I will write it upon the tablets of their heart. And from the least to the greatest, I will give you revelation. But a lot of people not getting no revelation. They're getting secondhand information. And they are all caught up with what somebody say God told them to do. Well, God's not a coward. That he have to send somebody to tell you what he wants you to do. He can tell you. And if it don't come through revelation, then the kingdom have not come in your life. And Jesus cannot be glorified as the one who's leading you. For you are following the law or you are following the prophetic word of a person. But we will never discard the law. We will never discard the written word of God because in there we find comfort. There are ways that God's words speak and tell us what to do. In the law, if a person sinned and didn't know what sacrifice to offer up to God, that was in the law written. What to do? In the prophetic book, when they quit writing, <laughs> the prophets told them what to do. And God honored that. But then one day, my Jesus, he sent his son. His only begotten son. John put it this way. And John, I like to talk about John because John wasn't called like Peter was called and he wasn't called like Paul was called. You know, Peter was called, you know, he was down, he was fishing. <laughs> when he got called. Paul was a tent maker when he got called. But when John got called, what was he doing? He was down at the seashore mending a net. <laughs> Why was John mending a net? John was mending a net so the fish couldn't escape. He had a ministry of recovery. Remember, you remember Peter asking Jesus, said, what shall this man do? And Jesus said to him, if he tarry here until I come, what has this to do with you? I gave you something to do, now I have something for him to do. And through his gospels and through his epistles and even through revelation, you find out what John was recovering the saints that was lost. He was calling the Christians back. He even made a statement that the seat of Satan was in the sanctuary. The church had allowed Satan to come in and sit in the church and take part in the church and lead the people of God. Oh, Jesus. You got unsavory people in the pulpit. Oh, yes, you got unsavory people calling themselves prophets. Unsavory people trying to minister the word of God. But John said, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. And no prophet told me. And I didn't even read it in the Bible. But I heard a voice. That sound like many waters coming from behind me. And I fell to my face like a dead man. When God intervenes, God gives you direct orders in what to do and how to do it. <laughs> you don't need nobody to come and tell you your job. Tell you what to do. <laughs> when God intervenes. I was happy. <coughs> My testimony, I was happy. I was thrilled in what I was doing. I was playing music. Everybody loved music. <laughs> I loved it. Love playing it. I love to see y'all act the fool. <coughs> I did. And I played hard so you would just cut up. 
all kind of stupid dances. And all trying to match the rhythm that we were making. Isn't that amazing? And I was happy just like you was happy. You were happy dancing, and I was happy making you dance. And I know, you know, I remember Bishop Black just said one time, said, you can teach a horse to prance to music. Well, I had y'all prancing and, and doing all kind of stuff. And it was happy. But God intervened. And when he intervened, he, he took the desire to make you cut up, to make you act up. He took the desire to try to laugh at what you was doing and why you was glorifying the devil. Oh, Jesus. And, and, and he brought me into the church. And when I came into the church, there were certain things I just wouldn't do. I wouldn't be a part of it. And, and I wouldn't be a part of it because to me, it wasn't glorifying God. It was glorifying individuals. And what I had to do, I had to back away. See, when you glorify yourself or you glorify somebody else and you're not glorifying God, you're doing the work of the devil. Lord Jesus. You see, when it comes to salvation, there is no buddy-buddy system. <laughs> the Bible says, let a man work out his own soul salvation with fear and trembling <laughs> and, and, and when Peter made this statement God stopped him and the reason God stopped him because he was putting Moses and Elijah equal with Jesus God not going to have it God is not going to have it he's not going to allow you to put a reformation <laughs> Uh, a minister you call that you have he's not going to allow you to put somebody else up nothing can be equal with Jesus Christ thy kingdom come Lord Jesus. and the kingdom could not have come until Jesus was glorified I can hear him say that if I be lifted up I'll draw all men unto me and we're not lifting up the name of Jesus. We're lifting up programs and orders of service. And different ones who, you know, speak, glorifying their messages and glorifying what we call their ministry. We, we are glorifying them. But little do we speak about Jesus. For he is the Christ. God called him the Christ. He said, this is Jesus Christ, my son. Oh, thank you, Jesus. And while Peter was trying to promote, Lord Jesus, Moses and Elijah, God said, I'm not having it. And so he just spoke. And they got so scared, they fell down with their eyes closed. And when they woke up, he had dismissed Moses which represented the book of law. And he had dismissed Elijah, who represented the prophetic ministry. And the only one left was Jesus Christ. When they looked up, they only saw Jesus. And then God showing them this. This is all you're supposed to glorify. Jesus, the Son of God. Well, thank you, Jesus. I know sometimes we feel like we're doing a work for the Lord by doing little antics in the church, carrying on little things, doing certain things in the church. But if you're not glorifying Jesus, if he's not getting the glory out of that ministry, you need to let it go. You need to withdraw yourself from it. You don't even need to talk about it. Because if it had not been for the Lord, who was on our side, if it had not been for Jesus Christ,